Hi there, I'm Josh Finn from JNH Aerospace, and we're playing with no cows today. So these are mini no cows, and this is one that I've had for a while. So uh, Valer Products, uh, George Breedhoff ran a postal contest for these um, right around when the uh, pandemic hit and everything was shut down. So it was a living room postal contest for eight inch span no cows. And so Stephen Wrigley drew these up. I think this one is the second one of these that was built. So uh, he's built several of them. And uh, we got up to about 20 seconds in the living room with them. A very exciting 20 seconds, to be very clear. Um, but so this one was the, the original, and we refined the design a little bit since then. It was very innovative because, like, the, uh, the tails are laser cut in one piece and the fuselage was as well so everything was one piece but what we discovered is since the grain has to go um, you know uh, longitudinally the uprights become very fragile and so the plane's constantly breaking so what we have resorted to is this which is the production version and these the um, the fuselage frame is still one piece but everything's notched for uh, grain uh, cross pieces that go in correctly. So that this is a kit that is available from us now. Uh, but this video, its purpose is really to show you how to trim uh, no cows and, and get them going well. So this is uh, this is the original one. We'll we'll put up a clip of it flying, and then uh, and then we're going to show you how to fly this one. And hopefully the weather will cooperate. It's been not ideal lately. We have a, you know, we'll have a day where it's nice and then it's cruddy because it's still winter here, early spring ish, and, you know, is what it is. If you can't tell from behind me, we're in the shop out here where everything's made. So, to give you an idea, laser's back there, the front door's up there, there's a Never flown, uh, never even finished Great Plains Rifle there, all the good stuff. There are airplanes built by famous people up there, like uh, Ed Conifus and, and whatnot. And in my collection of stuff back in the back. Oh, there's a sun streak. So, anyway, uh, without further ado, let's go look at uh, what all this entails. All right, so we saw that this airplane flies uh, quite nicely in spite of the breeze. Obviously, it would fly better indoors. It's kind of designed more for an, for indoor or very calm days. Now, we need to talk about center of gravity. This one's ba balanced very far forward, right about there. So we're going to try to balance this one a little bit further aft than that, because I do have a lot of, um, let's see, looking head on level with the wing there. You see I've got a lot of incidents. You can see the top of my tail here. And if you look real closely, again looking head on, you see this wing level and this one very positive. So I have lots and lots of, um, of wash in on this wing. I actually have some opposite rudder. Yeah, I guess it's about neutral because the fuselage is bent so I had to bend in the rudder opposite. And I have whole lot of left thrust there. I don't know if you can see how much that's angled. And that's just to make it turn really tight in my living room. So we're going to move on to this one. And currently it has none of those things. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to assume it needs a little bit of left thrust because no cows are quirky. So we're going to get the pliers and we're going to start with that and then we'll move on from there. I have had these Klein needle nose pliers since I was 13 and they keep going. There's something about the, uh, just, um, they are textured jaws, but they're not the, the usual grooves, so they grip better. 
But anyway, we're going to bend in just a little bit of left thrust. Right, I'm going to bend this around like that. So I bent it that way. And so it's still not giving me a whole lot of offset. Let's give it a little more. Yeah. Just like that. That gives me about what I want. And I'm also going to give it a smidge, just a smidge of down thrust. Smidge more. Oop. Popped it out of the bearing. So now you can see I have it angled down, so that makes my prop pull a little bit downward. Then the next thing is we're going to check our wing warps. And looks to me like I have wash in on this side. So we want to get rid of that. So I'm going to just bend the trailing edge of this right wing up just a smidge. Yeah, smidge more. And now, now if we look at it, it looks straight down the fuselage. So this tip is lower and the ankle of attack than this one. I'm going to give it a, oop, I cracked it. There we go. That's what we want. And we'll start with that. And then CG is currently about here. But we're going to have to weigh it with a rubber motor on it. So uh, let me let I break it. I don't know where I broke it. Ah, we'll be back with that in a second. All right, so we got that uh, wing tip wing leading edge repaired. So now what we're going to do is we're going to string this rubber motor on here. I'm going to try to. So what I'm going to do is this rubber motor is almost exactly twice the hook to peg distance and that means that I can just double it up and it's there. Now we check CG. CG is about right there. And I'm actually, that's that's a little further aft than the other one, as we saw. So I'm going to try to fly it there. I think that's a more efficient location. So if it works, um, this will allow me to have a slightly more efficient uh, setup. Uh, the other thing is I'm going to be expecting to probably have to add a little bit of uh, positive incidence in my stab. And we'll do that by cracking and re-gluing it. Um, Actually, we'll do a test glide, and we'll just see where that puts us. This is a terrible place to do this. This is so tight in here, but let's see what happens. Whoa! I don't know if that even showed up on camera. It was that bad. I mean, I launched the plane, and it just goes... Um, not good. So, we're going to add some up elevator. And the way I'm going to do that is I am just going to... Um, Crack this. Up like that. Yeah. And then I'm going to re glue it. So I'm just doing that one half of it, and we're going to see what that gives us. Duh. Had glue on my hand. Well, that's not bad. Alright, I've now done the same thing on both sides of my stab. And that's an actual glide. Okay, so we're going to wind this little airplane up. This is just a 
very simple process. So what I'm going to do is make sure the prop is actually in its bearing. Maybe. So I'm going to loop the rubber motor on there. And then I just need a hook of some sort to latch the nose bearing onto right here. And we're going to crank in about 300 turns. Eh, we'll go a little higher than that. We'll go up to 400. And then all we have to do is transfer onto the rear hook, slide it off, and then we are ready for our first powered flight. Alright, let's see how this goes. That's not half bad. And wow. Where'd it go? Here it is. Nice. All right. This is uh, about 850 turns. Prop needs to be balanced. Oh. Okay, so what we saw there was that the airplane was holding this nice circle and then it was straightening out and stalling out. So what we want to do is do something that will cause the airplane to pull more to the left at low speeds, and that is more left thrust. But we're also going to put in a little bit of down thrust to kind of pull it away from that stall a little more. So. I may have taken out some of my left that I could get. There we go. Alright. So you can see now we have down thrust. I have lots and lots of left thrust as well. So we'll wind it up again and see what we can do. Alright, so back to the same power and with more down and left. Hopefully not too much down and left, because that's what it's looking like, is that's too much down and left. Yep. I gave it a smidge of up elevator because it's not like it's stalling the rest of the time. That looks like that might be happy like that. Maybe. I think there's actually a hint of lift right there, which is kind of crazy. Alright, I gave this a smidge of right rudder just to combat that hard uh, left turn at full power. And it seems to have worked. Maybe, maybe not. I'm going to stall all the way to the ground. Not white yeah all the way all right bend in a little bit more down thrust it looks pretty awesome right there Alright,
All right, so um, the micro no cal Spitfire. I don't think I've completely explained everything. Uh, this is an eight inch span, and for competition, typically you're allowed a 16 inch span. These were built for what's called half no cal, which was the how the postal contest worked. And I think that uh, I think we've shown that this airplane flies pretty well. Stephen did a, a, a bang up job on this, as he always does with his fancy modeling of these airplanes. And you saw that last flight we got got really good performance out of it. There is a lot more to have. Uh, the, air, the airplane was dead sticking at a pretty good height, so for indoor flying, which is what I think most of you would use this for, uh, although I'm sure some of you will fly it outside, more on that in a minute, um, things that could be tuned, you know, the prop is way out of balance. I have not bothered to balance it. But one of the things that some of you will comment on there is that look kind of hard to fly. And no cows can be a challenge to trim, uh, no, no doubt about that. However, what may not be obvious is the, all of those flights <laughs> were filmed in a steady drizzle. Uh, so, and it, and it has progressed a, as we got out there. So those, the last three flights, it was a firm drizzle. And I know that didn't really show up on camera, uh, but it showed up on the airplane. So this airplane had very nice slack tissue before, and it's in the process of tautening up right now, uh, which hopefully will not warp it too badly, but I, I have permanently impacted this airplane in that regard. It's still in the process <laughs> of drying out. So that, that should give you an idea of the fact that um, we've pushed this airplane to, um, we've pushed it farther than you would want to push it. Any sane person would not do that. However, I needed to get this video filmed and so that's what we did. And we found some really nice air there at the end so you could, so the airplane got in calm conditions and was just floating away. Um, definitely watch out uh, flying this outside because the uh, that camo scheme, uh, well, the camouflage works. Let's just leave it at that. But anyway, uh, this delightful little kit is available on our website. It comes with waterproof printed tissue, which is the only reason I was willing to fly this outside. Is This, this is waterproof uh, ink. It is not dope proof, so beware of what solvents you use for covering, um, but this has been a, uh, I, I've, I've built two of these now, and both of them have fly, flown very, very nicely. I could get much longer out of this airplane. We were up at, uh, in the 50 second range on that last flight. Uh, the other one has done over a minute on several occasions, but uh, we're, we're just pushing the poor airplane too hard <laughs> at this point. I mean, we're flying it literally in the rain. So, I, I hope you've enjoyed the uh, the shenanigans, the trimming of this airplane and seeing it uh, up there uh, flying its heart out, and uh, we'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Josh Finn, this is Hope, we are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.